All right, so last Tuesday, patch 11031 went live. Um, I was three days ahead in video production, so this video you're seeing now is the first video with that patch installed. This is essentially the beta patch originally released on March 6th, the one that nerfed all the invisible ships that I spoke of earlier. That patch is now live to everybody, not just those who signed up for beta patches. I took the time to read through the entire Gynamagatic list of fixes they implemented in this patch. And wow! All I can say is hats off to you, Bethesda. Hats off. Hats off to you for your dedication. You are really making a statement with this patch, in my humble opinion. And that statement is we don't give a damn about you bitches whining that Starfield is boring. We are taking this game seriously and we are giving it everything we've got. Full steam ahead, damn the borpedoes. Haha, <laughs> see what I do there? <laughs> now, um, admittedly 99% of these fixes I was like, huh? I didn't know that was a problem. Huh? I didn't know that was a problem either. But, uh, admittedly, when I booted up the game after installing this patch, I was like, wow, the game looks better. I wonder why that is. And then I was thinking, oh yeah, right, it's the patch. You know, so, oh yeah, no, definitely, definitely a noticeable improvement. Um, so yeah, I guess all these fixes really worked. Yep, so, um, a couple of three things I want to point out. Uh, one is, um, let's just do a quick search here. Workbench. Yeah, this one. Yeah, definitely. I don't know how many times they experienced this, this glitch result an issue that could make a workbench appear to be obstructed. We've seen this glitch so many times in this walkthrough. I'm so glad they fixed that. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? Star map. This one here. Holding RB or Alt on the star map will now show the names of all star systems. When I, I first tried this, I was like, my jaw just dropped to the floor. I was like, OMG, what a huge, huge quality of life improvement. I love that. When, we, when I get into the game, I'll show you that. Yeah, just fantastic. I, I loved it. So yeah, great, great idea. This one here didn't work. Or I'm doing something wrong. I don't know what's going on. When using a keyboard, the player can now control their ship's power allocation when pressing the left alt key and keys 2, 4, 6, and 8 on the number pad. Didn't work. I I don't know what they're talking about. I tried it with number lock on, number lock off. N nothing worked. So either I'm misunderstanding what they did or it didn't actually work. But yeah, you know, once again, hats off to you, Bethesda. Hats off. Here's a big sloppy wet smooch for you. Mwah! Yeah. Hats off to your dedication, seriously. All right, so that's it. Um, we now return you to your regular scheduled programming. Major Slack Attack. All right, we last left off. We just uh, finished getting piloting rank four. We have completed Gauntlet of the Galaxy, number two. And we have money. Do I have money? Yes, I have 33,000 and 87 credits. Let's spend it. I want to do a big upgrade on the cargo ship. And this upgrade is going to take place at New Homestead in the Sol system. Let me just show you the star map thing. I am now pressing the Alt key. Woohoo! Isn't that fantastic? That's fantastic. Hey, that's just fucking fantastic. I love it. Way to go. Way to go, Bethesda. Okay, so, um, Saul, right here. Saturn, and find the moon Titan. Zoom in on that, and set course. You are entering United Colony space. Maintain course and prepare to be scanned. Very good. Scan complete. You're clear to land at New Homestead. That's right, because we're a law-abiding citizen. Let me just yank these points out here. Actually, it doesn't matter, because, um, yeah, I 
one thing that I found was missing from the patch was um, not touching our power allocations on our si on our ship. I would love to see them fix that. I'm I don't think they even regard that as a problem, but I would love to see an option at the very least. Don't touch my power allocations. Just leave them exactly the way I have them set up. No matter what, no matter how stupid you think I am, just leave them the way they are. <laughs> okay. Rant over. Let's land at New Homestead. Welcome to New Homestead. Please make your way to the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay safe. Uh huh. Okay, so we want to upgrade the cargo ship. Hey, anything I can help you with? We're here at New Homestead because sure. they have some specific parts that I want. Um, let's switch over to the cargo ship. Make it our home ship. Okay, we're using this to power level um, Starship design, so it's looking pretty wonky. I'm going to fix that all up and turn it into a kick-ass cargo ship. Okay, so I've got a big to-do list here. I'm going to follow it closely. Here we go, shipbuilder. Number one, temporarily remove all cargo holds. Go. Good. Remove all the cargo holds. Number two, delete all one by ones. Delete, delete, delete. Delete landing gear, landing bay, and docker. Landing gear, landing bay, and docker. Clean up all leftover starship design crap, okay? Delete that, delete that, delete that. Very good. Explode two by ones, okay? There's one two by one. And there's another one, okay? They're exploded. And let's just push this out here like this. Add NG all in one two by one A to the cockpit. Good idea. Habs. Nova Galactic all in one berth two by one A. Add it to the cockpit. Next, put science lab behind it. Nope. There's the science lab. Put that behind it. Up. Oh, stick. There we go. Put the workshop on top of the science lab. No. Very good. Workshop on top of the science lab. Add NG6 landing bay. Very good. Spin around to the bottom. Cockpit. Bay. Add this landing bay. New landing bay. Okay. Make sure it's flush to the front of the cockpit. Add an overbracer behind the landing bay. Over to structural Nova Bracer. Add NG20 landing gear wide times two to the bracers. Gear NG20. This is especially good because it's one of the few landing gears that has four landing landing thrust okay so that's important one on each side on the bracer attached to the landing bay so let's just duplicate this and on the other side very good next slap reactor and the rest of the ship back on okay Very good. Add NG2 docker on top of the berth. Replace the grav drive with an R2000 alpha grav drive. This is important, otherwise once we start slapping on all the cargo, um, it's not going to be able to handle it. It's going to complain that you need new cargo, or new grav drive rather. So. You must go, and we're replacing you with an R2000. That one right there. With grab jump thrust 20. Done. Next, add two Nova Bracers behind the workshop. There's a workshop. One. Two. Okay, and now we're going to slap on all the cargo holds that we took off. We'll get them basically for free. So basically, 
that would be seven V102s and one V103. Okay, so that's a V102. We get seven of them for free because we had them on before. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and we also get a V103 for free. Okay, and then now we're just going to fill out the rest of it with V102s. So we have a total of 18 V102s and two V103s. So the other V103 will go right here. And let's just fill up all the rest of the slots with V102s. And are you seeing this, people? <laughs> Now I knew this was going to happen, see? I had $33,087 and this operation cost $33,086. How about that? Who loves you? Slack loves us, that's right, don't you forget it. So I spent every, practically every last penny and um, I worked with several different configurations of maxing out this cargo ship and this is the most economical. So there we go, so now we have a whopping $6390 cargo space. This will allow us to do two full batches of ISO standard magnets and adaptive frames at our base. That's it. Let's name it. Let's um, repaint it first. And color one I want to be black. Color two I want to be orange. And Color three, I also want to be orange. Okay, what did I do wrong here? Color one should be black. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And I decided to call it the Golden XP 6390. Done and done. Just warnings, no errors, and we've spent every last penny. Done and done. That's our new cargo ship. Let's give it a test drive. Back to the base. Actually, um, first thing I should do is sell off all the miscellaneous junk inside. And that's one thing uh, that I did not like about the patch. Bethesda bones me again with the patch. First time they boned me, they nerfed out invincible ships, invincible center of mass ships. Now they bone me again because I've been stockpiling food in the lodge, as you know, watching this walkthrough. And they fixed, well that was, I should have known, I should have seen that coming. But, um, yeah, hang on, let me just sell off the miscellaneous here. Yeah, I should have seen that coming. Because every time you make changes to your ship, what happens is, um, all the food on your ship got sent to your cargo hold. And what was happening previously was, um, Work done? Your ship would just essentially respawn all the food. So every time you made changes, you got more food in your cargo hold, which a lot of people found really annoying. But I was kind of <laughs> admittedly using that to my benefit in this run. And I was stockpiling all the food in the lodge, but that doesn't happen anymore. So I, I'm kind of conflicted about how to deal with that. I think I'm going to split the difference 
I'll talk more about that when I get to that point in the walkthrough. Okay, so we got a new cargo ship. It can hold a lot more cargo. Um, one thing that the patch did, I noticed it nerfed. I'm not sure if this is intentional or what, but um, let's just wait four hours. And I had it set up so that uh, Cobalt would be over 900. Just like everything else, once you waited four hours. But now Cobalt is down to 767. If you check after waiting four hours, go down to the Edison Center Magnet. So, oh, now it's 900. Okay. Okay. Huh. Okay, so to fix that, I added an extra storage container, but I um, guess that's not necessary. I know what happened there. Check this out. See all the attached lines? They're now green. They used to be red, remember? Now they're green. Ain't that pretty? And I swear, fly cam mode looks way better. I don't know what it is. I, I don't even I didn't even notice anything in the patches about fly cam, but it just looks better. Everything looks better. That's great. Okay, so let's do a quick run here, and then I'm gonna skip ahead. Should be able to make all the adaptive frames and all the isocentered magnets and fit them in the cargo hold. Let's give it a shot. And it should be able to do that twice, in fact. Alright. Access the ship cargo and send all the resources there. And I'm not sure we'll be able to do it twice. Maybe. All right. Let's sleep four hours. I think here's where um, the cobalt is going to come up short. Yeah, okay, you see it did come up short. It was only full the first time. See, Cobalt's short of 900. I would have like to have it up to at least over 900. And Aluminum and Iron are also coming up a little short of 999, but that's okay. As long as they're over 900, that's good enough for me. So how I fixed this was simply adding another storage container. be to cobalt. That's nickel. This one here. And let's connect it. Okay, so cobalt is being loaded in that one. Wait another four hours. It should now push it up over 900. Here we go. Okay, let's do another run. And first, before I do that, I want to make a couple of futons here. Here. Why slack? Because they're nice and bright white. So put one there. Right here, like that. 
and I'll show you in a minute why I did that. Alright, once again. Level up to level 28, and ship. Put the resources in, and we still have... So we weren't quite able to fit two batches in, although... There's one point where I could fit two batches in. Um, at any rate, almost two batches, and I'm still overloaded, so what I'm going to do is simply dump the excess First of all, I'm going to stand over the futons. They're nice and bright white. I did this on purpose and stand right over the futons. Access our inventory, go down to resources, and simply drop these. These 594 isocenter magnets. Okay, so they'll be there. See, now you can see them clearly. Whereas if we didn't have the futon there, they'd be kind of like blend right in with the ground there. Now you can see them clearly so you can pick them up. And they'll stay there. That was another fix that they implemented where if you drop stuff in the ground and you came back um, sometimes it was inaccessible and you couldn't pick it up again so that's something we can do now on account of the patch yay Bethesda right so yeah I like, you, you, you're really sucking up to Bethesda no 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 hey come on I give credit where credit is due seriously um, so that's it so we can now go to town and sell off and um, I'm going to skip ahead do the rest of this off camera and what I want to do is do a whole bunch of runs and I want to get five skill points so that um, we can start working on this um, I'm taking a kind of a detour on my original plan my original plan was to I should explain that in the next video when it makes more sense but just very quickly my original plan was to um, max out stealth and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it first thing next video. We only have a little bit ways to go. And then start pumping points into nutrition. And this is really easy. All you have to do is just eat, I believe it's 15 food and drink. Doesn't matter. They don't have to be unique. They could be any food and drink. The next one is 30 food and drink. And the next one is 75 food and drink for a total of 115 food and drink. Now I've got maybe... 150, 200 food and drinks stashed in the basement at the lodge. And the whole point of power leveling nutrition is to put enough points into physical so that we can get down to rejuvenation. And that's one of the easiest skills to power level because we have to spend nine more points in physical to unlock um, rejuvenation. Okay, and one of the easiest skills to power level will be nutrition, it's just simply eating food. So that is my story and I'm sticking to it. I'll explain more about that as the walkthrough progresses. But for now, um, I want to get together five skill points and I'll do that by running back and forth. Jamming out a whole bunch of, whole bunch of adaptive frames and ISO standard magnets, taking the load to town, selling it off. And I'll keep doing what I'm doing, dropping any excess here. And at the end of the run, I'll just simply pick up the excess and take it to town. And all that while continuing to respect the rigorous rules of engagement outlined in the video description. Yeah, hardcore survival. Once again, we're playing hardcore survival. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the flip side when I take care of business off camera. Okay, thanks for watching. And if you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, post a comment. Most importantly, subscribe, 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 right? Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. All right. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.